Today, I will describe the fantasy, horror, and thriller film Tumbad. Spoilers forthcoming, be cautious and diligent. One day, Benayak Rao relates the ancient legend of the deity of prosperity to his young son Pandarang. The goddess represents gold and food abundance, and she carries the universe within her womb. As the universe came into existence, she gave birth to 160 million gods, of which Hastar, her firstborn, became her favorite. Hastar was so greedy that, despite his mother's generosity, he successfully stole all of her gold and intended to steal all of her sustenance next. As he attempted to pilfer the food, however, the other gods attacked him, tearing half star into pieces. Before the arrogant divine disappeared the stardust, the goddess rescued him. However, there is a condition. He cannot be worshipped by mortals and must be forgotten eternally. So for eons, Hastur resided peacefully in his mother's womb, until one day, when the villagers of Tumbad, where Hastur lies, invoked the sleeping god and built a shrine in his honor. Since then, the anger of every deity has fallen upon Tumbad, and the village has been cursed with perpetual rainfall. In 1918, Vinayak and his mother and younger sibling lived in the small village of Tumbad Malrashtra. Satashiv, the mother of Vinayak, is the mistress of an ailing local lord named Sarkar, who possesses a massive mansion. The two boys are also the old man's illegitimate offspring, yet they live in miserable circumstances. On a dark afternoon, their mother travels to the mansion to provide him with intimate services. She seduces him in the hopes of receiving the gold coin preserved in the statue of Hastur but Sarkar insists that it must be earned. She knows at the back of her mind that she must hurry him along because she has other pressing matters to attend to. Back at home, Vinayak and Sadashiv are extremely concerned about who will feed their chained and imprisoned great-grandmother. As the feeding time approaches, the two brothers begin feeding their sister without waiting for their mother. Vinayak initially intended to feed their great-grandmother, but out of fear, he sent Sadashiv instead. However, before Sadashiv enters the room, their mother appears and prevents the young man from carrying out this risky mission. She prepares the cuisine once more and then feeds the elderly woman herself. A few days later, Sarkar passes away, prompting their mother to depart Tumbad for Pune. Banadak, on the other hand, desires to remain because he believes there is concealed treasure in the mansion. He explains that they can awaken their great-grandmother and inquire about the location of the treasure. However, his mother explains irritably that Sarkar has spent his entire life searching for a non-existent treasure, wasting all of his ancestors' fortune in the process. As a result, his mother's resolve to leave the hamlet grows stronger, and Vinayak finds himself with no other option but to accept. Since their great-grandmother is no longer her responsibility, she resolves to abandon her as well. Vinayak walks outside to converse with the sibling, who is perched in a tree. Suddenly, he hears a crash and discovers that Sadashiv has fallen and struck his head on a boulder. Upon learning this, their mother endeavors to bring him to a doctor immediately, but she leaves Vinayak behind to feed their grandmother. Prior to their departure, she instructs Vinayak to cry out Hastur's name in the event of an emergency. Unfortunately, Sadashiv dies while traveling to the doctor, so their mother reroutes the carriage to the residence in order to retrieve the gold coin and return it to the family home. On the opposite side, Benayak prepares the elderly woman's meal, but is later summoned into her chamber. Upon opening the door, he discovers that his great-grandmother has no human characteristics. The more he observes her, the more he realizes her skin is rotten. Her irises are entirely white, and her jaws are tethered by sharp nails. Despite his fear, he asks his great-grandmother where the treasure is, but she replies that he must first feed her before she will reveal the location. When his great-grandmother says she will devour him, Benayak's blood runs cold, but he can't recall the name he's supposed to shout. The elderly woman chains Benayak's foot and drags him throughout the home. Finally, they turn a corner, and she removes a nail from her jaw in order to consume the boy's face. Benayak recalls his mother's words and immediately invokes the name of Hastar. His great-grandmother collapses to the ground and falls asleep in a split second. A few moments after his mother's return, they depart for Pune the following day. Despite Benayak's objections, his mother forces him to vow he will never return to Tumbad. Later, she gives him the gold coin of Sarkar. Benayak, now an adult, returns to his former house in Tumbad 15 years later. Surprisingly, his great-grandmother is still living, but the earth has devoured her and a tree has sprouted from her body. Then he inquires about the treasure in the mansion and promises to share it with his grandmother. However, she has no interest in it because all she wants is for her suffering to cease. 
The old woman is aware of Vinayak's desire to locate the treasure, so she cautions him about the curse that could transform him into a monster like her. Soon after she discloses the location of the treasure, Vinayak successfully locates it. Then he fulfills his pledge by setting fire to his great-grandmother. After achieving his objective, Vinayak returns to his Kun-based wife. The following day he meets with opium dealer Rondov to settle his financial responsibilities. Raida becomes curious as to the source of the gold coin he is given by the man. Vinayak, however, just explains that it is ancestral. Now, whenever Vinayak needs money, he simply returns to Tumbit to steal gold coins. Over time, Vinayak becomes wealthy and acquires an abundance of possessions through the theft of money. His wife gives birth shortly thereafter to a robust son, whom he names Pandarang. Raigav's business with the British is going insolvent, so he sells his widowed daughter-in-law as a concubine to Vinayak. Vinayak is then informed by the concubine of Raigav's plan to rob the mansion in Tumbad. Therefore, he devises a plan to imprison the merchant in the goddess's womb. Curious, Raigav descends the well unprepared and discovers a wall made of flesh that pulses as if it were alive. Vinayak's plan is successful. He continues to examine a location and eventually discovers a metal container containing a doe doll. As he holds the dummy, he hears a distant growl and is immediately attacked. Vinayak descends the well shortly thereafter and sees Raja fused to the wall, resembling a rotting creature. Like his great-grandmother, he now believes that anyone who touches Haster becomes cursed. Shortly thereafter, Vinayak forms a circle of flower around himself and summons the god with his doe doll. Once he learned from his great-grandmother, that Hassar's prolonged hunger was due to his inability to take his mother's food. Therefore, he desires food but cannot handle unprocessed flour. With this knowledge, Vinayak uses his dodal as a diversion while he swipes Hassar's loincloth, which contains the loot, and swiftly collects the golden coins that fall to the ground. This explains how wealthy Vinayak became. Before returning to the summit, he determines to end Rangav's suffering by setting a blaze. After 14 years, Vinayak grew elderly and frail. He is no longer as quick as he once was, and even the most basic duties tire him out. Consequently, he instructs his young son Pandarang to perform the same mission he did in Tumbid, in the hope that Pandarang can succeed him. However, Pandarang consistently disappoints his father, making him eager to gain his approval. In the interim, their household has endured significant changes. For Vinayak's concubine is granted greater importance than his wife, who is now treated as a servant. Also, it appears that he has told his family about the treasure in Tumbet, as his wife has been making numerous doe figurines in preparation for his upcoming trip. Vinayak brings Pandarang to Tumbet one day to teach him how to steal Hastur's riches. Before they descend into the goddess's womb, he instructs the young man not to bring the doe puppet for practice. Pandarang was oblivious to his father's warning, brings along the doe puppet, triggering Hastur's attack. Pandarang manages to steal some gold coins from Hastur, Despite narrowly escaping with their lives, Vinayak is not delighted with his son's accomplishment and proceeds to beat him for being so careless and foolish. The following day, they return to Pune, where Pandarang's mother questions him about what actually transpired in Tumbet. The young boy refuses and tells his mother to focus on household duties. The woman, offended, slaps Pandarang and forces him to show her the gold coin he received from Haster. In the meantime, Vinayak meets with some industrialists, who inform him that he must purchase a new mansion to enhance his reputation. Vinayak merely informs him that he now owns one in Tumbit following Sarkar's passing. However, he lacks the appropriate documentation to prove ownership, and the government is now claiming it as their own. Later, Vinayak explains to his son the situation in Tumbit and shows him his gold and cash filled safe. The following day, Vinayak defeated Pandarang. The small boy presented his dad's concubine with a golden coin and informed her that he intends to marry her when he matures. This angers his father, so Pandarang speaks out that they should seize Hastur's one cloak rather than the coins so that his father will stop beating him. Additionally, he suggests they create multiple doe figures to buy them more time. This ingenious plan convinces Vinayak, who quickly makes arrangements to return to Tumbet. Prior to their departure, Vinayak takes Pandarang to the local brothel while his wife prepares an abundance of flour for the doe figures. Shortly after returning to Tumbad, they descend into the goddess's womb. They are appalled, however, upon learning that Haster multiplies proportionally to the number of doe dolls they possess. Seeing that there is no hope for the safety of his son, Pandarang cries and attempts to stop his father, Benayak, 
from making a fatherly sacrifice by tying all the dough dolls to his body to use as bait. But Vinayak's mind has been set. As soon as they came into contact with the gritty flower circle, all of the hasters that followed him turned into dust. Once the danger has passed, Pandurang exits the boom and takes a moment to catch his breath before entering the outside world. He hears his father's voice suddenly. Discovering that he has become a demon, exactly as the curse states, Vinayak summons his son and presents the host's loincloth in an effort to accomplish their mission in Tumbet. But Pandering, who is now weeping over the condition of his father, refuses to receive his offering. The young boy knew with a heavy heart that he must set his father on fire to end his anguish. He executes his plan, causing his father to scream in pain. Therefore, Pandurang instructs him to slumber or Hastar will pursue him. Vinayak eventually closes his eyes. Pandurang then departs Tumbat. The end of the day. Please subscribe to our channel Film Insider and click the bell icon if you enjoyed the video.